What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. And today I'm gonna be going over my top 15 tips if you are a new Uber driver. All right, so like I said, this is gonna be my top 15 tips if you are a new Uber driver. I did a previous video on five things that I wish I knew as an Uber driver when I first started and put a card up to that video um, on one of these sides here that you guys can check out. But I'm literally just gonna hop right into this video for you guys and I do have my phone because it's quite a bit to remember. I don't memorize all this and I wanted to use my notes with you guys. All right, so getting into this video guys, tip number one is gonna be to ask the passenger what their name is. A lot of the times you will have the passenger say, hey, are you John? And you could say, yeah, but you haven't verified who they are. You need to make sure that you know who this person is that's getting into your car and just verifying that identity. This is especially important if you're gonna be working late nights, if you're working when bars get out, people are intoxicated, they're not really paying attention. Um, so it's important that you ask them what their name is. You know, you need to be identifying they're picking up the right passenger because at the end of the day, if you have the wrong passenger, they're gonna dispute the fare, they're gonna get their money back, they're gonna be taken to a place that they don't wanna be, it could turn ugly. It could be just a weird experience. It could be a you know potentially dangerous situation if you don't, you know, you have a random person in your car who's not supposed to be in your car, who didn't even request the ride, who is just acknowledging that they are Susie or whoever, you know, requested the ride. So whenever you get to a pickup spot, don't say, Hey, are you Antonio? No, you ask them, Hey, what's the name on the account? And let them tell you what the name is. Now Tip number two would be to work the highest tier that you can. So if you have an eligible vehicle for Uber Select or Uber XL or Uber Black or whatever, you wanna work the highest tier that you can. Yes, there's gonna be less demand, but you're going to make higher fares, you're gonna have less mileage on your car, less depreciation, less wear and tear, and typically you're actually going to make the same, if not more money, you just will not be as busy. So in this case, for me personally, I did Uber Select, and what I would do is I would work at a Starbucks. I would bring my laptop, I would bring a book. I would sit in my car and listen to music and listen to audiobooks while I waited for the next call. So make sure that you're only doing the highest platform that you have, because at the end of the day, if you're driving an Audi on Uber X and you're making 60 cents a mile and the mileage deduction is 58, I'm sorry, but you're losing money each and every mile that you drive. You're losing money. You know, you're not technically taking money out of your pocket, but you're depreciating your car to where it's gonna be worthless and then you're gonna need maintenance and you're not gonna have the money for the maintenance. So make sure that you work the highest tier that you can. Tip number three would be to set a daily and a weekly goal in dollars and not hours worked. So if you need to make $500 for the week and that's your goal and it only takes you 15 hours to do that, then you're done for the week. Go enjoy yourself, go you know, whatever you wanna do, maybe go work on your passion because obviously driving Uber is not what you wanna do for your life. So if you have, you know, maybe you wanna do YouTube videos, you know, and you made your $500 for the week, well now go spend the rest of the week making your YouTube videos and focusing on your content. So this is a huge shift that when you're working as a self-employed individual, which you are as an Uber driver, um, you need to shift your mindset away from the concept of dollars for hours or hours for dollars. That is an employee mindset. That is what has been engulfed in your brain. That is what you've been told to do but that's not really the way to get wealthy. That's not the way to operate when you are working as a self-employed individual. When you're working as a self-employed individual, you need to set a dollar amount on your time and not an hour amount um, so that you can be the most profitable and that you can have that free time because that's ultimately why most people do this Uber job. Some people do it between jobs, but many of the people who choose to do Uber choose to do so because they have more free time. They can make their schedule. They can work when they want and then they can not work when they don't want to. And you wanna keep it that way. So like I said, if you wanna make $100 for the day and you do it in two hours, great. If it takes you 10 that day, then it takes you 10 that day. Just set a dollar amount that you want each day and each week and you're gonna be a lot better than just spending 70, 80 hours grinding all the time working the wrong hours. So. Tip number four is gonna to be to don't drive around and look for rides. Number one, because if you do not have rideshare insurance, you are not covered during this period. So if you were to get into any sort of an accident during period one, which is your app is on, you're driving around looking for fares, your primary insurance company is not going to cover you unless you have rideshare insurance. And not only that, but you're wasting gas, you're wasting you know, your AC, which is costing gas, you're using your radio, which is you know, using gas, and you're just making yourself vulnerable. So make sure after you do a ride, park and wait for your next ride, unless you're literally in the middle of nowhere, you know, then you wanna drive back. But in most cases, 
you want to stay where you are because you could actually be leaving a place that has a really good passenger looking to go back somewhere. So make sure you just park and wait. All right, tip number five would be to make sure that you are dropping off and picking up in safe pickup and drop off areas only. There's gonna be a lot of passengers who want you to drop them off in the middle of the street. They want you to drop them off in a no stopping zone. They want you to drop them off in areas that you should not be dropping them off. And they will do everything in their power to tell you that they wanna be dropped off there. And some of them may give you a lower score. Some of them, whatever they wanna do is fine. Do not drop somebody off in a no stopping zone because this actually happened to me I let a passenger dictate where they wanted me to drop them off. I stopped and I got a $190 moving violation. So at the end of the day, you need to worry about you and not a passenger. At the end of the day, you're gonna have hundreds of thousands of more passengers over the course of doing Uber and one low score is not going to kill you. It's not gonna get you kicked off the platform. Um, what I would suggest is if you have a passenger like this who's giving you a very hard time about not being dropped off there, what you wanna do is after you drop them off, send in a request to Uber. You can usually go in and send in a um, comment about that driver or that rider or whatever, and let them know. You know They wanted to be dropped off in a no stopping zone. I refused, drop them off in safest zone possible and just say your side of the story. 99% of the time, you're gonna get an automated response and I'm gonna read your stuff, but it's good to always just cover your bases just in case um, this rider has it out for you. There's a lot of riders who will report you as intoxicated or do some you know, really messed up stuff because you didn't um, cater to what they wanted. So always pick up and drop off in safe areas only. Tip number six would be to never pick up any minors. Each and every passenger needs to be 18 and above. This is stated in the Uber and the Lyft contract that they need to be above 18. If you get in a situation where a kid is trying to get in your vehicle, keep your doors locked, roll the window down, and just let them know, do you have a parent coming with you? And if they say no, then at that point, you need to let them know, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be able to take you because you are under 18. Um, and, and move on, you know, that's what it is. You're not gonna, don't go back and forth with a kid because the kid really doesn't know what's going on. Um, the kid will try to tell you that, well, I do this all the time, the drivers always take me, um, it's not a big deal, nobody's gonna know. Don't do it because there's so many things that can go wrong with having a minor in your car, guys. If you get in an accident, you're in a big problem. You're not even supposed to be picking up a minor. It's again stated in the contract that you do with Uber. So you can get deactivated for doing it. If you get into an accident with that minor in your car, you could have some big problems. That minor could say that you touched them. They could say that you did something that you didn't do. There's just so many things that can go wrong with having a minor by themselves in your vehicle. Just avoid it at all costs. And like I said, keep your doors locked, roll the window down, let them know you're not gonna be able to take them. If you get a call coming from like an elementary school or a middle school, just don't even accept it because clearly it's probably going to be a kid. It could be an adult looking to get picked up or dropped off from work, but 99% of the time, it's going to be a kid just using the Uber service. So protect yourself at all costs. Tip number seven would be to never accept a cash ride. Once in a while, I never had this happen, but I know people who have had people ask them, hey, can I just give you cash? Nine times out of 10, it's gonna be some undercover um, person for the city or wherever you may be um, looking to try to see if you will accept it. Because at the end of the day, if you're taking a cash trip, you're not covered under any type of insurance. You're technically stealing that fare from Uber or Lyft and they're not gonna like that. And if you get reported, ultimately what's gonna happen is they're gonna deactivate your account. So never do a cash ride. If somebody wants to give you a cash tip at the end, that's perfectly fine. But make sure that nobody comes up to your window and says, hey, I don't have a phone, I don't have an app. If I give you 20 bucks, can I take you? The answer is always no. All right, so this next tip, it depends each and every state has different laws. Um, but when I lived in Florida, I lived over in the tourist area and we would have a lot of tourists, you know, going to Disney and Universal and they would not have car seats. Now, if the child is under five years old in Florida, they do need to provide a car seat. Now, some drivers carry them in the trunk. That's completely up to you if you want to go and spend a hundred dollars on a car seat and have it in your car just to cater to these passengers because at the end of the day, 90% of people are not going to tip you, unfortunately, and they're not gonna even notice your extra efforts of having a car seat. So I would not go out of my way personally to buy a car seat, to have a car seat, to, to provide a car seat. Um, the parent with the child should be bringing a car seat. They should be traveling with a car seat. They know the, the laws, they know the rules. 
they're just not wanting to bring it because they didn't want to pay to have it on the plane they didn't want to carry it around with them and ultimately they're trying to put that responsibility on you so make sure that if there is a child under five years old there's a car seat in the vehicle with the child in it otherwise you can actually get a ticket for this and not only can you get a ticket but if something happens to that child you get in an accident you're going to be at fault you're going to be responsible for that and you're going to have to live with that so make sure if they're under five you have a child seat all right so tip number nine i had to switch up the movement of the camera here because the battery died and I had to plug it in so hopefully this is okay for you guys number nine would be do not end the trip until they're out of the car you don't want to be in a situation where they are you know wanting to go somewhere else or maybe they were just picking up a friend there and now you know they do want to go somewhere else whatever the case is um, just make sure that they're physically out of your vehicle the door is closed before you actually end the trip number 10 after that would be do not start the trip until they're all in the car there's going to be people who are going to take your time for granted there's going to be people who um, you know have three other friends inside the house that are not ready and then they don't come out for 10 minutes and meanwhile you should have canceled that ride gotten your five dollar um, cancellation fee and then moved on and probably gotten another ride from that because nine times out of ten these people who take forever to wait are only going to give you a four five six dollar ride anyway so you might as well get your cancellation fee out of that that's why there's a timer that's why they get charged a cancellation fee because they were not ready and you are fully entitled to do that that's why it's there the next tip would be to make sure that you take a break every few hours whether that's to eat whether that's to just walk because you're doing a lot of sitting so it's good to get on your feet move around walk around uh, maybe that's to get a coffee shop maybe that's to stop and work on your laptop for a little bit whatever it may be um, just make sure you take breaks every couple hours because always being driving behind the wheel can be very stressful number 12 would be do not wait for your passengers this was kind of touched on in not starting the trip until they got there but again you've got like a five minute cancellation window i believe it might even be lower now but i know when i was doing uber it was five minutes um, but make sure that you get your cancellation fee if you're at where you're supposed to be you're there the timer is running uber will actually tell you cancel the ride they will tell you right there to slide to cancel um, maybe it's different now but it used to say slide to cancel and you cancel it and you move on to your next trip you're going to get another ping probably right away if you notice that it's the same address i would ignore it personally um, i have had situations where i've canceled on somebody and then picked up the same person and there hasn't been any like weird um you know altercation or you know you could have that person who gets really pissed that you got you know you canceled on them and now they had to request a another ride so um, just be aware of if you're going to cancel you know you may get the same ping again just ignore it move on to the next one is what i would suggest um just building on this again would be um, do not take them through a drive-through there's going to be people who especially late at night they're going to want to go through a taco bell or a in and out and you're going to waste 30 minutes of your time taking them through this drive-through which you're going to get paid pennies on the dollar for like 10 cents a minute or something and then once uber takes their fees out of that it's like eight cents a minute so for waiting 10 minutes you literally just made 80 cents like it's 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 ridiculous and these people are probably not going to tip you they're probably going to spill food in your vehicle um, i did not take anybody through a drive through i had people you know ask me to do it i said that i would drop them off at the restaurant and they would have to cross another driver but i'm not going to wait in a drive through um, because i don't get paid based on time i get paid on the mileage and the amount of rides that i do you have to look out for your best interest whenever you're doing this you're in this to make money that's why you're doing it so make sure that you're maximizing your time while you're doing that number 13 would be to get a dash cam you never know what these passengers are going to do and just for your own safety in case anything was to happen um, it's always good to have a dash cam especially you know in the case of an accident or if some passenger claims that you were doing something that you weren't um, it's just always good to protect yourself you can get dash cams on amazon for pretty affordable um, they would pay for themselves right away if you were to have some sort of a situation where it came in handy um, and it was necessary for you to have that so um, yeah just invest in a dash cam it's tax deductible so it comes out you know out of your taxable income so it's a business expense so definitely take advantage of that and grab one tip number 14 and this is actually a big one guys i kind of wish i had put it um, a little bit earlier in the video and that's to start a blog or a youtube channel or something that you do from home in relation to uber so whether that is making videos like this maybe you have a youtube channel that's all about uber maybe you have a blog that is all about uber you want to have something to where you can actually tie more 
expenses and things that you can do for taxes into that job. So if you don't have any other sort of business where you work from home, this is key, this is crucial, um, because you can actually tax deduct your home office. So if you have a um, office like this, you know, you write a YouTube blog or whatever it may be, you know, and you need to buy a new computer to do that, that is a business expense. You need to get a new desk, that is a business expense. You need to get a monitor, that is a business expense. Your internet can be written off. There's so many tax advantages that you can make for yourself to be able to write these things off to have a actual business versus just being a driver. Um, there's just so many things that you can do with this. And um, again, I'm not a tax advisor. I'm not a tax professional. These are just some suggestions that I would give to you guys would be to have some sort of a home office set up so you can write off cameras and, and all this stuff that you have here. Um, use it to your advantage. You are now a business owner. So, you know, start acting like one. Don't just be an employee who just drives a car around and that's all you do. There's so much more opportunity that you can actually take advantage of when doing Uber. Last and final tip would be guys just to be friendly. I know that 99% of you doing this don't want to be doing Uber long term. You're doing it between jobs. You're doing it to sustain an income. You're doing it for side income. You're doing it for some sort of reason to make money. You're not doing this because your dream is to be an Uber driver. So always be nice to the people that come in contact. You never know who's gonna get into your car. You never know what kind of connections you're gonna make. You may meet somebody and because they like your service, they may give you their card. They may have an opportunity for you. You know, if you guys are chit-chatting and you mention that you do videography on the side and you have a videography business that you're trying to build, you know, they may say, hey, you know what? I'm interested in some video. You know, you seem like a cool guy. Here's my card, shoot me over an email and let's talk some business and see what we can do. And boom, there you go, you have a client. So I know it's not the job that you always want, but you have to still be professional. You still have to present yourself in a good way because again, you never know who you're gonna come in contact with. I had a couple NBA players that I drove around. I had um, little Bow Wow once. I had the Kardashians marketing manager that I took up to their house. So there's a lot of people that have been in my car that I would have never had in my car had I not been with Uber. And it can lead to a lot of good things if you do it the right way. So those are my top 15 tips for being an Uber driver um, that I wish I knew when I first started. And just if you are a new driver, just things to um, keep in mind when you are driving. And I think this can help you guys out. If you liked it, make sure you give that video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe down below, turn on the little notification bell. And other than that guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.